Welcome to In 5 Minutes. The agenda of this clip is to implement a clogged SR latch or latch with an enabled signal using pass transistors and transmission gates. Okay, let's get started. Don't get intimidated by seeing what is coming on the screen. It's very straightforward. In the previous clips, we have already seen the gate level diagram of the SR latch with an enabled signal. We also saw the truth table for the same, where we saw that if my enable signal was equal to zero, which is nothing but my first two cases, my output Q and Q bar will hold the previous value. There'll be no change. However, when my enable signal is high in the remaining cases, then if my both inputs are zeros, again, there is no change in the output and it holds the previous value only if you see. And if it's zero one, if R is one, that means the output is resetted to zero. If my S is one and R is zero, then the output is set at one. And if it's one, one, then we already know that it's nothing but a race condition and that's technically not allowed, but my output both will try to go to logic high. So this truth table we have already seen. The simplified version for the same is drawn here without an enable signal, presuming that the enable signal is high. And now what we want to do is nothing but implement this at the pass transistor style. Remember, we have already implemented a two is to one mux using pass transistors. So I'm going to use a few two is to one muxes to implement this. And it's a very straightforward thing. It's nothing but a concept called as nested muxes. Let's see what does this mean? Let's go on diagram A from right to left and let's analyze. This mux is going to be my mux three. So let's analyze mux three first. Now we know that our final output will come from the truth table only when enable is high. If enable is low, the final output will nothing but the previous state output. That is nothing but drawn in MUX3. It says that my select line is enable. If my enable signal is equal to zero, that means this one, then my Q, which is nothing but my previous value comes at the output. This is QN plus one. So the previous value QN will come at the output. If my enable signal is one, that means this is one. It will check on, if you see here, it will check on for the different combinations of SNRs. So that's where this is the MUX2 and MUX1B and 1A. It's nothing but a different combination of SNR, which we'll quickly understand right now. So one, take different combinations of SNR into consideration. So this is nothing but my MUX3, which is very straightforward. Let's quickly go and dig deep into MUX2. Let's do that, MUX2. Now we have already taken care of our enable signal. So what is left is the different combinations of SNR. So we'll be looking at this truth table specifically. So MUX2 is going to have one of the two inputs from SNR as my select. Here I'm considering R, so R is my select line. Now R can be zero and R can be one. Now when R is zero, that means this output will go. Let's see what is that output. Now that will depend, again, if you look at the truth table, R is zero in two cases, case one and case three. The output depends on what is the value of S. So if R is zero, which is the case which we are considering, and S is zero, then my output is nothing but equal to Q. If my R is one, Sorry, this is again R equal to zero. One more case we have to consider first. If R is zero and S is equal to one, then my output is equal to one, which is nothing but this case. So here you see that R is a select line. When R is equal to zero, again, there are two cases when S is equal to zero and when S is equal to one, this is nothing but giving birth to my MUX 1A with a select line S. So when S is zero, we know that my output is nothing but Q. 